Joe Biden was wrong. All car makers are going against him for pushing EVs on the common man. From forcing companies to abandon gas cars to killing non-EV sales with strict emissions policies, political leaders have been doing everything in their power to rush EVs. But this just backfired, and the entire EV market is now crashing hard. Companies like Honda, GM, and even BMW are finally going against the EV regulations, and the EV hype is finally over. But why does no one want to buy an EV? Are the political leaders hiding something from us? EV companies are going to crash soon, and I'm going to expose the truth, so watch everything carefully. Picture this, car makers across the US are practically on their knees, begging President Biden to hit the brakes on this whole EV madness. Why? Because they're staring down the barrel of financial suicide. So here's the deal. Biden has been pushing hard for EVs. I mean, really hard. The word on the street is that he's forcing every car maker into making EVs, and they're freaking out. They know that going full throttle on EVs could spell disaster for their wallets. But why? The short answer is, EVs are not selling, and people are finally seeing through the hype. Four fatal flaws and thousands of unreliability issues later, gas cars are still the way to go. First up, let's talk about the EPA's new tailpipe emission standards. These guys have set some serious targets. We're talking about reducing pollution from new vehicles by about 56% in 2032, compared to what it'll be in 2026. And that's a big jump. Biden is basically saying after five years, two out of every three cars sold should be an EV. And the way to hit these targets? But of course, more electric vehicle sales. But here's where it gets messy. Many automakers are like, hold up, Jack, this is way too fast. Even though President Biden announced a target of 50% zero emission vehicle sales by 2030, the EPA's going even further. And car companies? They're not happy about it. You see, back in the day, these automakers were all, yeah, we're gonna do the EV thing. But now that the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law have rolled out, with all their climate investments and charging infrastructure plans, it's like reality has hit them smack dab in the face. If they don't sell more EVs, they'll have to pay heavy fines. Now Ford is already under a $4 billion loss, VW has become the most indebted company in the world, and GM? Well, they nearly lost $700 million and almost stopped EV production altogether, thanks all in part to Mary Barra's flawed leadership. Now car makers have poured more than $210 billion into transitioning to ZEVs or zero emission vehicles in the states. They're planning to invest another $1.3 trillion by 2030. Every major automaker has made some pledge about upping EV sales. But guess what? All these commitments were made before the Inflation Reduction Act became a law. This act is a game changer, providing massive support for building out the EV supply chain and making electric vehicles more affordable for consumers. So, why the panic? Well, despite their public promises, automakers are now sounding the alarm. They're claiming the EPA regulations are unrealistic. Take GM, for instance. They're aiming for 100% zero emission vehicles by 2035, but they want the EPA to stick to Biden's 50% target for 2030. Nissan's another one. They promised 100% zero emission sales by the early 2030s, but now they're backtracking to just 40% by 2030. And Honda? They're playing it even cooler, hinting that their public announcements should be taken as set in stone. Toyota's in the mix too. Despite claiming to have the most electrified vehicles on the road, they're moving at a snail's pace towards more EVs. They've got a solid lineup of traditional hybrids, but when it comes to plug-in hybrids and fully electric options, they're lagging behind. Then there's Stellantis. They're calling the EPA's proposal overly optimistic, despite their own bold commitments. It's like they're saying one thing in public and another behind closed doors. Now, I know what many of you are thinking. Why would people suddenly stop buying EVs? If EVs are so great, why would people suddenly stop buying them? If you were thinking about getting one, you might want to sit down for this. There's a new report that just turned the EV world upside down, and it's got everyone from the big EV makers to the average Joe totally shook. This report is basically saying that EVs have about 80% more problems than regular gas-powered cars. Yep, 80%. On the other hand, hybrids are doing better, with 25% fewer issues than gas cars. But pure EVs? They're in trouble. You're probably thinking, but EVs are newer and more advanced, right? Well, not exactly. Here's why you might want to think twice before getting an EV. Let's get into the four major issues with EVs that the report uncovers. Issue number one, battery problems. 
These EV batteries, they're like ticking time bombs. Forget the whole EVs catching fire thing for a second. The real issue is how sensitive these batteries are to temperature. Too hot or too cold, and they start losing their minds. In extreme cold, your EV's range could drop by up to 30%. Imagine planning a trip and suddenly your car can't go as far as it promised. Plus, these conditions can wreak havoc on the battery, shortening its life. Issue number two, build quality. Let's talk about GM's build quality for a second. It's not great. Customers are constantly complaining about rattling noises, poor fit and finish, especially in GM's EVs and hybrid trucks. It's like they put these cars together with bubble gum and duct tape. Issue number three, charging nightmares. Charging EVs is a whole fiasco. Not everyone has a charger at home. If you're on a long trip, it's a game of Russian roulette. More than 40% of charging stations are busted. Get stranded in the middle of nowhere with an EV, you might as well start waving down gas car drivers for help. Issue number four, limited range. Unless you're dropping major cash, like 75 grand, most EVs come with a pretty sad range of about 300 miles, and that's in perfect conditions. In the real world, you'd be lucky to get 200 miles. So what are the companies doing now? Slamming the brakes on EV production in North America, pushing back manufacturing targets to 2025. Now let's talk about the broader market. Tesla's slashing prices, Ford's reducing production, and Mercedes-Benz is calling the EV market a brutal space. Automakers are being forced to cut EV prices just to stay in the game. Ford, for example, lost about $36,000 on every EV sold last quarter. Ouch. That stings. Here's another shocker. The average day's supply for new EVs has doubled since last year to 88 days. That means EVs are just sitting around waiting for buyers. Gas-powered cars? They're selling like hotcakes in comparison. So what's next for EVs then? Experts are doubting that we'll hit that 67% EV market target by 2032. Right now, EV market share in the US is only 7.9%. Automakers are rethinking their strategies and more EV model launches might get delayed. Now, if you're asking me, should I get an electric car? I'd say it's a bit of a gamble. Do you spend big bucks on an EV that's likely to have issues or go for a more reliable and cheaper hybrid? I know what I'd pick. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom. EV technology is improving and charging infrastructure is growing. The EV revolution might be in a bit of a rough patch, but it's still rolling. It might just take a bit longer for EVs to become the norm. But not everyone's hopping on the panic train. Ford's actually backing the EPA's proposal. They're all in on electrification, investing over $50 billion through 2026 and planning to reach a global run rate of 600,000 EVs a year by the end of this year and 2 million by 2026. Consumers are snapping up EVs left and right. Charging stations and network investments are rolling out. Automakers have been saying they're ready for this electric revolution, but now it's time for them to actually step on the gas, or well, that electric pedal, and make it happen. And what's going to happen to our beloved gas cars? Well, they aren't going anywhere, not for a long time. Here's where it gets interesting. There are two types of hybrids. Conventional hybrids, like the original Prius models, have a small battery that helps boost gas mileage. They can't drive more than a couple miles on battery power alone. Then there are plug-in hybrids, much like the Prius Prime, with a bigger battery that you can charge up for about 25 to 50 miles of electric driving before switching to gas. Now, hybrids make a lot of sense when it comes to cutting emissions. Switching from a gas car to a hybrid can reduce emissions by about 20% while driving. And plug-in hybrids? They can offer up to 46% in savings in emissions compared to gas cars in the US. Some places like the EU, California, and New York are banning new gas car sales by 2035, but they're still allowing some plug-in hybrids. So the road to zero emissions isn't going to look the same everywhere. Despite all these commitments and advancements, automakers are trying to play both sides. They're publicly supporting EVs, but then crying foul over the regulations pushing for a faster transition. It's like they want to dip their toes in the electric waters without getting shocked. This whole situation is a classic case of talking the talk, but not walking the walk. So what do you think? Is Biden's EV plan benefiting Americans? Let me know down in the comments below. I just uploaded a video about groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Do check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.